Okay, so it's now the next day. All this urethane rubber is uh, hard. Yep, so let's try and get this, first of all, get this mess cleaned up and we'll see if this mold will release. I also got, uh, just I scraped up all the stuff, all the rubber that was on here. And I didn't want to pour it in there because I don't know if it was good enough, but I just poured it in this little mold too for a little wood spirit. So I'll get the camera on the overhead mount and uh, get to her. Oh, uh, also before I start taking this mold apart, I just want to show you Pete has some screws in here. One, two, three, four, and four on the other side. If you didn't see my first video, I got it hot glued up all on here and along the edges. And if these pieces don't come out, if I can't get these separated from the rubber, why can't I just use, keep them on there? I'll just keep them attached to the rubber, right? It'll be like a support thing because it's a lot, this this um, rubber molding is going to be a lot thinner on the edges than I was hoping. So this might just be like a support wall, these things. But anyways, okay, this was a smaller mold that I made a few, uh, about a month back. I forget the name of the stuff. But this is just extra stuff I scraped off all the t off the table, so let's um. I just why not? I see all the other mold, pro mold people just using have extra molds for their extra stuff. So yeah, there's a rubbery wood spirit. I usually give these uh these guys these little guys away when I send out a carving or something. I don't need all this stuff, right? So anyways. There's that. It held pretty good detail. There's a bubble there, but this was, like I said, let's hope there's no bubbles in this one. So let's get this one apart here. Okay, so I got all the screws out of here on the other side too. And, um, you know, I know this is going to be a real son of a gun to get uh, off because, well, I hot glued it. I hot glued at the edges and well, I got this pry bar. Some of you guys be like, don't use a pry bar, Jordy, because the last thing I want to do is rip this mold, okay? So heavy hands is going to try and be as light as hands as he can with this pry bar in his hand. So, and I got them all hot glued here too. I need to get a razor blade and try and cut these uh, hot glue marks in here too. You guys can't see them, but trust me, they're there. All of these things. Oh, what a pain in the butt. Okay, I tried to cut them with my X-Acto blade. Let's see, I might have to use my heat gun to get those. Uh... Oh, man. I'm going to need a hammer. <laughs> okay, pry bar, ballpoint hammer. Let's see if we can get it apart this way. Oh, he's got it screwed on the bottom too. Shoot. See the little screws in there? See, I gotta go around and unscrew all the bottoms too, I guess. Two thousand more to go. Good job building this box, Pete. Thanks again. Okay, so I got all the screws out. Now let's see if this side comes off a bit easier. Okay. So let's uh, take the big sides off. Okay, one more side to go. So you can see the rubber. These things are encased right in the rubber. Can you see that? 
And I knew that was going to happen. Anyways, I'll get the other side off. Okay, so I got all the sides off, okay? So now you guys can see here the rubber obviously leaked through these cracks of these things, these uh, fillers that I had to put in. But let's see if we can pull this rubber off that wood. So it is coming off, you guys can see. But uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just best leaving these in here. I'm going to take a break. I'm not going to panic. Pete, Pete said, Pete, I talked to Pete about this last night, my good buddy Pete. He's very knowledgeable, knowledgeable, all this sort of stuff. But he says, just take your time. If something's giving you a problem, stop, relax, and just something will come to you. So do I need to pull out these boards? I'm just not sure yet. I'm going to stop, drink some coffee, and think about it. Okay, I've thought about it. I don't think I need to pull these boards out, but the one thing I do want to do is I want to cut them all right here, right? So what I'm going to do is go outside. I won't film it. I'm going to get cut, put a straight line like right here and make a nice cut with my jigsaw. I guess. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Don't forget to have your hand sanitizer. Okay, okay, she's all cut off. Okay, so here you guys can see I got it all cut off with the uh, jigsaw boards. I'm thinking I'm just going to leave these boards on, but we'll never know till. Now I got to flip this around. Oh, this thing's heavy. Not that heavy, but it's heavy a little bit. I got to take these screws out where I screwed the, um, the friggin' wood green man in, okay? So... I got a drill here. We'll just take these screws out. And we'll see how easy this board pops off. Look at that. Look how easy that comes off with the wax that I put on there. Look at that. That uh, fellow that... Uh, that fellow, he's a pro uh, molder. He's been doing it for years. He says that is the best mold release stuff they can make is the beeswax. I used a hot glue gun here. I'll show you right here. I used to use the hot glue gun. This is the beeswax that you get on Amazon. You get a brush and you just get this all wet and you just put it on. I'll be doing that for my next uh, stone uh, carvings that I do too. So hot glue gun, get this wet, the wax inside this wax paper, beeswax. Get your brush kind of uh, warm. Don't melt your brussels, but hold it away. Okay, whatever. Repeat. Okay, so I'm super pumped up about that. That's wicked. This thing came off awesome. So imagine how easy this whole mold would have came apart if I didn't have to put those silly little wood slats in there. And they don't look too close to the mold anywhere that I see. So now I gotta try and get this mold out of here. I'm just gonna get my X-Acto knife and cut around here and see if we can get her out. Whatever, 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 whatever. Okay, so I did know that they were gonna have, this was gonna have lots of flash underneath here because I didn't wax the sides, but that's okay. So let's cut this little X-Acto blade thing here. I'm gonna go along around, cut it, and then I'll see if I can pry this out. This is, Keep your fingers crossed. Okay, okay, so I got it all cut around here. I zoomed in a bit so you guys can see. It's it's released. You can see the little crack there all the way around. So now, because I got those wood pieces in there, this is hard, this whole thing. I can, here, let me zoom out. So because I'm keeping those wood slats in here, right, that are all the way around, you'll see. This is not flexible. I can't bend this, so it's going to be tough to get this mold out. So I got to think of something soft. I can actually, let's see here. Yeah, I got to think on it how I'm going to pop this out without wrecking the wood carving itself and not breaking this. Okay, so I just like to take a second and talk for here. Whatever.
Okay, I'd just like to take a second for all the pro molders that um, see this video, the series. Remember that I'm totally 100% amateur and this really isn't something that I should be doing. But hopefully, it was a nightmare yesterday and hopefully this mold has turned out because it's, this cost me 250 bucks. So this is a completely rookie video at making molds, okay? So what I found, I'll pull out. I can um, repair the wood curving if it dents it. I got a fork here from uh, World War One. You got one of those, Evil Rick? And uh, I'll just figure I'll pry this in here. And look, it's popping out. And it's been in the fork. So I'll get this out. Oh, it's in there good. Okay, yeah, it's just been in the fork, but uh, I'll figure it out. Come on. Ah, this is where I got to slow down, take my time, see what's going on. Relax, Jordy, relax. Okay, so I can pull this part off the table or bend down. I'll get my hand in here. And let's uh, do it. Okay. So my hands underneath the curving. Oh. Whew. Okay. Alrighty, there it is. See a couple little air bubbles in here, but that's not that's not bad for a rookie. I think it looks pretty clean for a rookie job. Oh, there's a hole there, but don't forget, don't forget, I saved this mold. This could have been a total waste if I didn't wedge it up and put the wedge under there and make it like tilted. So. This looks good, no damage to it. So I guess, guess I gotta get some cement and um, yeah, there's a couple of bubbles, but that's no big deal. The, they'll sand off no problem. How can I make it so you guys can see this better? Okay. So if you look right here, there's a little air bubble. Tiny, there's little tiny air bubbles. But there's nothing here, it's nice and clean. Let's see on this side here. There's a couple. If you look there, that little thing sticking out there, that's a deficiency, but I can cut that off. Okay, see it there? That little thing sticking out. Anyways, there's an air bubble, that black thing there. But I can sand that off after I'm making the mold. So I'm I'm kind I'm pretty happy. Now I guess the last thing to do is get some cement and pour some cement in this sucker, huh? Okay, so I just seen a couple more little bubbles in there, but that's gonna be hidden. That's the top of the cast, that's gonna the, the top of the shelf where those are gonna be. And bubbles I don't mind because when you do your mold pour with the cement. The cement might fill in those bubbles, but it will be stuff, it will be like a piece sticking off here and I can sound it. It's not an indent, it's an out dent. There's a new word for you, out, out, out dent. Okay, so what I got here is a bucket of hydraulic cement. It cost me 30 bucks. Probably get three pours out of this. So if anybody, um, I'd love to read in the comments people's opinions on different types of cements that you pour. If you got any experience doing this, I'd love to read your comments. I just bought this stuff. It's more expensive than the bag cement because, uh, well, I just want it to set faster. This stuff sets really quick. So um, I got the mold pre, um, whatever, mold release sprayed in there. So you can see here from the mold pour, it's not level. So I'm going to put it back on the board that it was originally on. I got this level and I'll level it off so it's nice and flat when I do that pour. 
So the mixing this up and stuff like that, I'll just be doing a time lapse outside doing the pour. So I'll just wait till this cures a bit and then uh, I'll take it inside and let it dry out properly, proper temperature. So you can see there I took off, I had to make a hanger for it. So that's what's going on there. Okay. Okay, so I got everything, uh, I got it sitting in the room. I'll crank up the heat in here, let it dry overnight. First of all, here it comes. You got to sign it. This has been 20 minutes. That's how fast that stuff cures, but it's not, not, it's not finished curing. It's just setting. So this is going to be hard to get out of here because you got this overhang here, right? So with these boards in here, this, this uh, mold is not that flexible. Like that's me trying to bend it out. And well, we'll have to see if we can get it out of here without this breaking. You know, so I'm going to have to let this set for maybe a good two days because it gets pretty thin down here. Okay, so it's been like an hour. You can see this, how hard this cement already is, right? The hydraulic stuff. Look, I can barely even scratch it with my nail. So I thought about this and I've talked to my buddy Larry Dibbs there on Vancouver Island. I'm not going to be able to stretch this mold enough out to get this piece out without breaking it. That's why these molds are rubber, so because you can stretch them out, right, to pull it out. Because I don't want to wait a month till this is 100% cured to pull it out. And even then, it gets pretty fragile down here, and it might break. I'm going to set my camera up in my holder here and show you guys. Like, I should be able to just get my hands and bend this out, okay? It does a bit, but I'm going to show you with all my strength, because these boards are in here down the sides that it won't bend, okay? It does a bit, but nowhere nearly enough because there's overhangs in this mold, okay? Nowhere near enough. So what I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna have to get a razor blade and slip down here, it was Larry's idea, slip down each one of these things. So then when I go like this, it will release right here, like, it will spread apart right here because other ways you're going to break it. I know I've done enough of this. You're going to break it and you need to, and we got to save the mold. That's the most important thing is saving the mold. Okay. So the dreaded process begins. Oh, it's not too bad actually, but oh boy. This is what happens when you don't do something properly from the first to the very beginning.
You know what you say, you know what they say, don't you? The laziest man has the best ideas. <laughs> okay, so like I just said, the laziest people have the best ideas. Let's try this multi-tool out. <laughs> okay, so sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. So I cut slits all the way down here on each one. So now, look how flexible it is now. It's still pretty rigid to try and get a mold out of here, but because right down here it can break. It's so thin, right? But um, I don't know. I don't know if I should pull all the all these wood blocks out of the one side. I think it's thinner. The mold's thinner on this side than it is this side. So maybe I'll pull them all off on this side because then that side will be flexible and that's all you need is one side. That's my next plan. I'm going to pull all these out. Okay, so I tried to bust one free here. And I got to remember it's about protecting the mold. Oh man, this is such a... Look at that. Put a screwdriver right through the friggin' wood. There's heavy hands for you right there. Oh boy. Okay, you guys can see it's upside down. So this guy that's that I, where I bought this molding stuff wasn't lying when it's when he said it sticks to everything. Man, it's tough to get these one board out. Like took like five minutes to get this out. And I'm trying my best to protect the mold. So I'm paying huge for my lack of my errors when I first started this uh, piece. If I made the right size mold, I wouldn't have all this freaking problems to do all this crap. Ugh. Yeah, so it's just, it's just a freaking nightmare. Okay, so I've worked my butt off. I got uh, two pieces out here and two pieces out here. And now, now look, this is what I wanted it to do. Now it's flexible. Okay, it's still, it's, this stuff is, very, this is very tough rubber, not as flexible as I hoped it would be. So I'm going to cut it with a bandsaw down here next time. Cut all these slats right off. It's tough enough. So let's see, this uh, hydraulic cement or whatever it is, has only been curing for, um, well, I've been trying to take this apart for two hours. So it's only been curing for two hours, but let's see if I can get it out of here without breaking it. Oh, it's stuck in there. So, see now you just can't bend the mold the way you need to bend it, right? So, I don't know. Ah. Ah. How about I just get it done and then I'll, uh, I'll show you guys if I, get, if I can get it out. Uh, it's uh, see what I mean? This is where I knew it was going to buckle in here. Uh, oh. Okay. Oh, yeah. Way better than the other stuff. This, well, this is hot. You can't even touch it. But look at the eyes. The eyes are perfect. Let me have a break and so I'm not huffing and puffing on the microphone and I'll be back. That's wicked. I love it. Wick, wick, wicked. 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 Okay, so I want to end off this video showing you guys. This is the one that I made with the cheap silicone and it broke off the uh, in the silicone tubes and it broke off at the bottom. And this detail's all right. See his eyes not good. Where the original carving, his eyes were mint. Well, here's this one. Those black spots aren't bubbles. They're just black spots in the cement. The 
Look at the eyes. That flower right up there, you can see it's broken. That broke off because I was impatient with taking the thing out of the mold. I took this out of the cast, out of the mold three hours after. There's the fisherman, little worm Jordy up there, just enjoying the view up top. Here's the original. So yeah, it was a friggin' battle. From the very from the very beginning, spending the two hundred and fifty dollars till the very end, it was even a battle hanging it on the back wall. Let's get this guy over here a bit more. A battle, but I succeeded. I think it came out mint. There's barely any bubble holes in it. Those aren't bubble holes, it's just color of the concrete. You can see some on the flowers just a little bit, like right there. Who cares? You guys, and another thing too is like, when you go to your cement place or your garden place or something like that, you see these cement statues and stuff like that, and they're not cheap. Well, because now you know how much it costs to mold them. Then you got to do the cement. But now, since I got the mold, okay? Since I got the mold, I can keep pumping these out and out and out. They're not wood carvings. It's a cement. Think how many years this will last compared to a wood carving outdoors. You know, so I, I don't know how much I'd charge for this. If I want to go to a garden center and see if they'll sell them for me. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Anybody that knows cement uh, sculptures and stuff, how much do you think this is worth? I think it's like, uh, I don't have a tape measure. Hold on a second, I'm gonna measure it quickly. Yeah, it's 22 inches long, six inches wide at the top and about six, five inches depth. So 22 by six by five inches depth. Oh, a lot of friggin' work, guys. But you know, I'm just letting you know, I don't think, hey, when it comes to this stuff, oh, I worked my ass off because I didn't know how to do it proper, but I won. I won on this one. I didn't really win on this one, but this one is a 100% win. 100%, I don't care what anybody says. And I did with the molding, I did everything wrong. The only thing that was right was the thing that Pete, the box that Pete made for me, but it was wrong because I gave him a way too big of a measurement. That was my fault, not Pete's fault. But if I didn't have to put those little slots in there, this thing would have popped out of there no problem with the wax, like the bottom came off no problem. Anyways guys, I'm not gonna keep on going on about it, but there's gonna be some uh, green men around Ladner, people's outside places, that's for sure. And Pete, if your wife wants one of these for making the box for me, no problem man, she can have this one right here. And thank you Pete. So you guys, I got my mold set up for my next pour. I cleaned it all out. Just some warm water, everything's clean. And there you go. I did it. Hard work paid off. Boy, oh boy. Not the smartest work, but it paid off. Hope you all good. And uh, hmm, what am I gonna carve next? What am I gonna do next? Maybe I'll carve live tomorrow. Oh. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit that like button.